Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the 2023-2024 Duma OS setup video. We're going to go over everything you need to know when it comes to setting up a Duma OS router. Bonus, at the end of this video, there is a brand new quality of service system on the way to Duma OS routers. It is absolutely amazing. So if you want to see more about that, stay tuned to the end or use the timeline down below. All right, so I'm actually not going to walk through the initial setup of your router. I figure you guys got that. The one thing I will say is never do that with Wi-Fi. Always make sure you're connected via Ethernet for your main router setup. Just getting that initial setup taken care of. Always use Ethernet. And when you're coming back to adjust some settings or whatnot, Wi-Fi is fine. All right, so once you've gotten through that main setup, you have the Duma OS dashboard. And on that dashboard, it has a page called dashboard. The dashboard allows you to pin anything that you find within Duma OS that's super important to you. So you find that you're using the geo filter all the time, you can pin that to your dashboard. Then you can resize it and pin all the other stuff. And now this is really good for PC gamers with a secondary monitor. You can play your PC game on one, have Duma OS on the other. You can see anything that you find critical on this dashboard page the way you want it. However, most of us out there, well, we don't have two monitors, or if we do, we're not, we don't want to take it up with a, a screen like this. We have phones. Phones are great, right? Or a tablet. Well, there is a Duma OS web version, which we'll take a look at later. It's streamlined for web usage. So um, makes things just a lot easier if you're on phone or tablet, but all the basics are still there. Your geo filter, etc. There's a couple things that are missing that you need this dashboard for, but it's really not that big of a deal. And I actually find myself using the web version all the time and pretty much have left this older dashboard behind so i leave the dashboards dashboard completely blank because i don't use it there's no need for me to do anything here but again you can pin whatever you want here and set it up however you want but more for the pc player next thing down all right the geo filter man this is a feature that is just highly underrated i get it everybody loves quality of service quality of service quality of, and quality of service is great my friend it's great the geo filter Man, that really takes that quality of service to the next level. It, it allows you to see the ping and location of the people you're playing against, the servers you're playing on. And once you kind of take some time to figure out what the best servers are, what works best for your connection, it really makes a huge difference in your online gameplay. So let's start up top. We have a drop down menu. And in this drop down menu, we have kilometers or miles. Choose your poison. And we have strict mode, auto ping host. You will see that these are already checked. We're not gonna even worry about those, all right? They're checked, they're doing what they need to do. I will mention, auto ping host does exactly what it says. So it automatically pings the host to the server or player you're playing against. That gives you the ping information and allows you to see, hey, is this somebody I wanna play with or a server I wanna be on, etc. The only time you would want to turn this off is if you're trying to add a friend. Um, if you have your radius set up, which we'll talk about here in a second, and your friend lives outside of that radius, they may not be able to connect to you. They probably won't be able to connect to you. In which case, you'll have to come over here, unclick the auto ping host. You notice a little drop down, a little menu kind of went away over here. And then have them jump into your party or whatever, and you'll see them show up on the map wherever in the world they live. Then you can give them a click and the information will once again show up down here and you can name them and stuff. And that's what this whole allow deny list is. You could say, hey, this is a person. Now, I didn't name this person, but they're a person here, right? And they have whatever ping they have and then you can block them, name them, etc. So if you have a friend and they're like, I can't get into your party, what's going on? That is a, a kind of a thing that happens. You have to come into this part and choose your friend, put them in your friends list on the router, and then you're good to go. Resync Cloud. NetDuma has a cloud service that they update with all the latest gaming information. 
The unfortunate thing about the cloud system at NetDuma is it's all individual, so you have to update your geo filter or your ping heat map or any of these other things individually. I've asked NetDuma to streamline this process as you know it's kind of a hassle to remember. You shouldn't really have to worry about resyncing your cloud. Maybe there was a power outage, internet went down, even internet went down in between you and where NetDuma is for like a couple days. There may be some funniness, in which case you're like, oh, things are not working exactly right today. What is going on? You can always try resyncing cloud and getting that latest cloud information from the NetDuma servers. All right, next, we need to add a device that we can filter so that we have a better gaming experience. We could see where those players and peers are. For me, that is gonna be an Xbox Series X. So we click add device, Xbox Series X, next. Then we have two different things we could choose from. Recommend a mode for my game or choose manually. I always go with choose manually. This gives you the more granular uh, approach and figuring out what works best for you. However, if you're new and you're like, I just want an easy setup, my friend, recommend a mode for my game, continue, and then we're gonna look for our, the game we're playing, right? Now, wait a second, what if it's not on this list? Well, you can kind of choose its nearest neighbor, right? If it's a fighting game, yeah, you know, even though Mortal Kombat and Killer Instinct are two completely different fighting games, they are fighting games. So I, you know, choose one of the two. It's like, well, what about like Tekken or, you know, whatever is not on the list at the moment. And you could say, oh, well, you know, like Street Fighter. Uh, look at all these, kind of choose in between them, figure out what works best. Again, I like to go the manual approach. And once you use the geo filter for a little while, you'll probably go the manual approach as well. All right, so we're going to go back and we're going to choose manually. Then we're going to continue. And the next part is, hey, do you want this filter to be on right now? And the answer to that is no. Actually, you don't want this on right now. It can cause problems. Um, let's say you're on the dashboard of your favorite gaming console and your filter is on and then you went to load into a game Well, it may not let you load in it may run into some party issues Things can get really funny same thing with a PC player who has this set up for PC You turn on your PC like why I can't connect to this one server discord whatever something's just being really weird it's most likely that you have it filtered. Don't forget to make sure to turn the filter off when you're done gaming, uh, when you're done with that specific game. You wanna make sure to turn it off in between games as well. And I mean, what I mean by that is like, if you're switching from Fortnite to Call of Duty, make sure, hey, I had it on for Fortnite, turn it back off, load into Call of Duty, then turn it back on. As long as you're in the multiplayer side, then you're okay. And what do I mean by that? Well. You know, some games have a campaign and then a multiplayer and then you can kind of load in. Some games load straight into multiplayer, right? And then you kind of sit in a menu or whatever. So if it's one of those, you sit at that menu, then you turn on your filter. If it's a game that has like the option to go to multiplayer, you know, there's like campaign multiplayer, go ahead and load into the multiplayer part, then you can filter. So just make sure you're in multiplayer before you start filtering. Otherwise, you could run into issues. And again, if you're filtering and you know you have a party or something going and a friend can't get in, you may need to add them, which is you know not that big of a deal. All right, so now we're gonna continue and it's going to apply that initial setup. So I've got my Xbox Series X. I am not filtered right now, or I could turn it on, but we're not gonna filter. And then we've got our circle, all right? So this is our main mode. It's circle, it's the platter, it's the whatever you wanna call it, the radar, right? And uh, this is where things become a little complicated. All right, so we have the map of the whole world and then we have our location. And we wanna choose that by either clicking this set home manual button, this little dude here, and figuring out wherever it is in the world that we live and we plop it down. Or you can put your address in by clicking the little home, put your postcode, your address, whatever, right? And that'll pop you right on top of where you live, give or take, which is exactly what you want. Right, you want your radius on top of where you live when it comes to this particular mode so that it says, hey, okay, so this is where I live. Anything in this circle, I deem okay. Anything outside of this circle, go away. Leave me alone, I don't want it. Now, this is all gonna depend on the games that you're playing. You actually may find that, hey, uh, I want this smaller or bigger or whatever. And that's all gonna be 
depending on what games you're playing, your location, etc. So with this particular mode, it's very just open, right? Like this is a very big circle. There's no real granular control here as it's a circle. However, we'll talk about the granularity here in a moment because there's another mode, polygon mode, where you can really dig in deep and that's really cool. But we can't forget about ping assist. What is ping assist? Well, ping assist allows you to connect to servers or players outside of this circle or outside of the thing that you draw. So you got this circle and say, hey, I know all the servers are in here. They're good. Their, their ping is low. I connect to these servers. I have a good time. A smile is on my face. Cool. However, I also see hmm, there's the occasional server over here and oh man, their, their ping isn't that bad. It's 30 milliseconds. It's 40 milliseconds, you know, not, not too big of a number, right? So we can come over here and we can say, well, uh, I want to still be able to play on other servers that are 30 milliseconds or below. Now, we normally kind of want to set this in between uh, 30 and 50 milliseconds, right? Because that's not too high of a ping. Now, if you're ping to most game servers is really low you can just go even lower for me i do not like to use ping assist at all i like to have that granular control when i have the circle i only want to play with people in the circle don't even bother me don't i don't care i don't care if you got 10 millisecond ping i don't want you connecting i'm good same thing when it comes to my polygon mode and so let's take a look at polygon mode polygon mode is where you get your true true granularity you can get really in there and dive in deep figure out where servers friends etc are and then you can draw around those things now this is really cool because you can just kind of you know make whatever shapes you feel necessary for you and um it allows you to have that granular control one of the big problems currently when it comes to the geo filter is there's no direct way to see where the servers are that you want to have mapped out well okay i i where do i draw i don't know where to draw where are the servers for my favorite game are they low ping high ping i have no idea how do i find any of this out that is the next feature down in the ping heat map now the ping heat map is fantastic and i've uh, i love this feature all of us do, but the biggest problem is it's separated from the geo filter. So I have asked, others have asked if this is supposed to be integrated together. And I think the plans are for them to integrate these two features where it's just easier to see what's going on. And you'll, you'll, see, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So we come back over here to the ping heat map. And this is the thing that allows you to ping your favorite games and see, hey, uh, what's high ping, what's low ping, where are the servers located, etc. And you're like looking through this list and you're like, well, I, I play Mario Kart, buddy. I don't, where's, where's the Mario Kart or whatever. There's a game missing. Uh, use its nearest neighbor. So just kind of use some common sense. If like, if it's a fighting game and you're like, well, Tekken isn't on this list, but I see Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Just kind of use its nearest neighbor and it'll give you a good idea of where ping will be low for you. The whole point of all of this is to keep your ping low. The lower the ping, the better your experience online is going to be. All right, we're going to choose Modern Warfare 2, right? We come over here, and it's going to ping every single server in the world that it sees. Cool. Real easy. Now, we can scroll in, because I live in the United States. We've already uh, concluded. I'm in old Colorado here. And so we come over here, United States, and we can see we got 41 milliseconds all the way up to, you know, Miami at 63. So that's, none of that is actually terrible. None of it's actually great, but it's, all of this is in the very tolerable range. However, I'm in Colorado, so I'd probably want these servers. Let's see, 60, 50 milliseconds. What about, you know, 51, 60? What about here, 45? So I'd probably want all of these. What about this one, 41? What about this, 60? Well, that's actually pretty far away. Don't be wrong, so is that. So this probably would be my best server to play on somewhere in Texas or right around in here, right? So. Now we have an idea of where the ping is for each location, right? We're gonna say, oh, well, most games are probably gonna be around this ping here, here, and here. Now we come back to the geo filter, and this is where it's kind of a pain. You gotta remember that stuff, and you can then draw your shapes. You could draw a big shape like I did. You notice that I did keep out these other servers. I only wanted the Washington 
and the uh, California ones, and then just kind of leaving all this open. So anything in here is open for me. Anything outside of this little box thing that I made doesn't connect to me. Why? Because I have zero ping assist. But if I wanted to connect to, let's say that server that was right here, that was like 45 milliseconds, I could say, well, uh, let's just put that up to like, I don't know, 50, right? So then I'll connect to that. I'll even connect to that other one that was over here and kind of low and I'll connect to these, but anything that's 50 and higher, which over here, like the Miami that was sitting at 60 and et cetera, I won't connect to those. So that's, that's how all that works. Again, these two things really do need to be put in together because it's it, get like, where was it? Oh, what was it? Nah, kind of a pain. So um, hopefully in the near future. All right, next thing down, network monitor. Self-explanatory. You can monitor your network traffic. Don't need to really dive in too deep here. Traffic controller. I actually really like this feature. I wish more routers had it. And I know these days a lot of routers do, but there are still some that don't. And this is really nice if you got kids and you know you want to have some bedtime rules. Now, luckily, my kids are pretty awesome. I don't really have to worry about it. But let's say your kids are up they're on their phone. Man, past 10 o'clock. So we're going to set a rule for the phone. Next, all traffic. We want to make sure it's it's shut off or however we want it. So we've got some options. All traffic, the port, port range, a category. Like, I don't care if they listen to music, but I don't watch the, I don't want them on YouTube after 10 o'clock. Like, fine, listen to music, not watching videos. So you have some options for all of those things. Or you can just block everything. And then we got our times and days. We can say block, we can allow, or you could straight up redirect, which is also a cool option. So there's some granularity here. And I like this. You can set it up. My, I don't care if my kids are up on Friday, Saturday. It's fine. And then I want them to go to bed at midnight. And they can have their internet at like 7 o'clock in the morning. So you can set all that up however you want. Really cool thing to have. And uh, more routers needed. Device manager. This is where you manage your devices. Self-explanatory. Nothing really to go over here. I mean, you could choose your two different things. We got a tree or a table. I always prefer the tree. And it just it looks better that way so there's our tree uh, this is one of those sections that does have a sinking cloud this is for deep packet inspection which ties back into the quality of service system I know weird that it's like that but it is like that so be aware if you're like wait I saw this youtuber or this person's talking about I have this thing on my Duma OS list they have a particular game that you don't have it's probably because you need to resync your cloud and make sure you're up to date. Connection benchmark. This is the way that you can test on your router and see if your speeds are good, if your ping is good, if your ping under load is good. You'll notice all this stuff is blank. That's just because of the way I have things set up and uh, we're not going to worry about that. It has to do with the new smart QoS and stuff like that. Again. That's a video for another day. Ad blocker. Hey, ad blocker is self-explanatory. It blocks ads. Now, you can see I don't have it enabled. Uh, I don't actually use this particular ad blocker. I use a DNS place based ad blocker. I've talked about previously uh, here on the channel called Next DNS. I've also found another one that I've been testing that's pretty good. And uh, I might make a video on that sometime in the future because I like it. It's a lot. It's pretty comparable to next DNS. Anyway, I digress. Uh, you can come through. You can block ads. You can add custom lists and stuff. If you guys want to know more, hit me up down below. All right, data history. Again, self-explanatory. Talks about all the data, your gaming, what's going on here and there. You're uncategorized. If you want to break things down, really cool feature. Hybrid VPN. This is where all your VPN stuff lives. I've been asked over the years to make a VPN video. I, I hate to disappoint, I really do, but there are no plans currently to make a VPN video. I know there are some situations where you might actually want a VPN. My focus is gaming, and if you're a gamer, you really don't want a VPN. I know there are some people out there who say you do. Trust me, you don't. It's just gonna add extra hops and things, extra latency, it's not worth it. If you want to watch, you know, a Netflix in another country or something like that, hey man, 
that makes sense, go for it. But I won't be setting this up anytime soon. System information. <laughs> I'm actually not going to click on that because it's going to show some information that I don't want to show. But you guys get it. It shows you all your system information. Network settings. Again, this is where you set up your network. Pretty self-explanatory. You really shouldn't mess with anything. You will see that I do have a DMZ for my console. That is because of my particular setup. One thing I will mention when it comes to your network settings is we're going to turn off IPv6 on both sides, on LAN and WAN. So we're going to start off with LAN, turn off IPv6, save general. And we're going to come over here to WAN, turn off IPv6. We're also, we don't have to worry about allow ping. We can actually turn this off. I have this on because my router is actually connected to another router. It's, it's a big thing. I, I could get into it. I won't. Let's just say for everybody else, turn this off. And then all the other ones, all of this stuff, off. Off, 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 off. All right, now you're good to go. So that is it when it comes to the NetDuma R2 and setting everything up. We have a couple more things we need to get into. Quality of service both the new quality of service, which I'll show at the end of this video, bonus, and the old quality of service, which we'll get into right now using my Netgear Nighthawk XR500. All right, let's get into the current quality of service that is within Duma OS. Again, there is a new quality of service system coming. If you wanna have a look at that, stay tuned to the end or use the timeline down below. All right, so, this current quality of service thing is a bit complex. I've seen people get confused and try different things over the years and you'll have success for a little bit and then things won't work right. I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know so that when you set this up with this current quality of service system, you don't have to come back and touch it, all right? I've been through this for a long time. I've tried so many different settings and I really figured out what works. One of the biggest things that causes issues is this quality of service flower, wheel, this thing. Just don't mess with it. I repeat, do not touch this. Don't, I know you're tempted. I know you are. I was tempted plenty of times too. But what'll end up happening is you'll adjust this wheel. You'll go do some tests. And if you're paying really close attention, you may notice some of these tests being a little bit funny. You also may notice, hey man, I'm playing, it's great. This is smooth. I've adjusted everything toward gaming and Netflix and you've adjusted the wheel and you're, you're having a great time online. And then a couple days later, you come back and you're like, why is it not playing so good? Why is this? Why, why is Netflix loading weird? Why am I getting buffering? I have enough bandwidth. Why is this lagging? Oh, it must be that darn quality of service wheel. Let me go mess with it again. Just don't touch it. Leave it alone. Please leave it alone. All right. So now that we've been through that, we got to start up top. This is the main feature right here. Congestion control. What is a congestion control? Well, congestion control allows you to cap your download and upload and get rid of something called buffer bloat. Buffer bloat is undesired latency that can happen when you're downloading or uploading. For a lot of households, this isn't an issue. If it's just you, your games console, your PC, a phone, a stereo hooked up, whatever, maybe some Netflix, you're probably okay. However, if you got a busy household, plenty of people off of YouTube, on YouTube, on Netflix, playing games, things are always going on on your internet, buffer bloat can happen. It can cause lag spikes in your favorite games or just make things feel sluggish and it'll ruin your experience. So we wanna do everything we can to get rid of that and make sure our gaming experience is smooth. Again, leave this wheel alone. It'll feel good for a little bit, and then you'll have some bad games, some buffer, all that kind of stuff. All right, so we have some options up top. Our drop-down menu allows us to set our bandwidth speeds, our upload and downloads. We're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, done, cool. Then we've got some other options. We're not gonna worry about those. All right, next thing down is we have three 
main congestion control settings. Never, never turns off congestion control. It does not cap your upload or download. It just leaves it at whatever you get from your ISP. Cool, that's fine if you're just watching some Netflix, you just want to download a game, etc. But as soon as you hop online to play, well, that's where the problems come in. That's where those downloads will cause your game to spike. And you're like, why? Why did I just skip a little bit? I, that, why did that guy, when I was railing him with bullets, not drop? Well, it's the congestion control buffer blow. So what we wanna do is use one of a few different websites to test for this buffer bloat, see if we have any, and then slowly adjust our upload and download until we've gotten rid of buffer bloat. People freak out about this. I freaked out about this at one point. It's really not that big of a deal if you have a little bit of buffer bloat on your connection. You will probably not notice it. It'll be fine. You will live. Waveform is one of the big buffer bloat tests that I use and many other use, but one of the things it kind of is confusing about is this buffer bloat grade. Everybody's looking for this A+. If I don't have an A+, my connection sucks. No, it's fine, buddy. It really is. It's going to depend on a few different things. Let me explain. So we have our base ping. This is the ping to the server that we're closest to, our ISP, that kind of thing, right? So this is just our base. And that will also go into this low latency gaming check mark and also give you this A+. If your base is like 30 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds, whatever, if it's high, you're not going to reach this A+. It's fine. What we're actually looking to do is make sure we don't have any download active and upload active. What does that mean? Well, you're downloading a game and it starts downloading it's going to create a bit of latency within your connection, depending on your connection, your equipment, etc. That latency will show up here as a plus whatever, right? What we're trying to achieve is a plus zero, or at the very least, plus five and below. So anything plus five down to plus zero is fine. You're cool. Anything above that, yeah, you might run into some issues. Really, at the end of the day, if this isn't like plus 50 and this isn't plus 50, you're probably okay. If it's plus like 10, 20, 30, eh, you know, the higher it is, the more buffer bloat you do have and it will start becoming a little weird online, but it won't ruin your gaming experience. At the end of the day, we're trying to achieve this zero. Now, there are other websites you can use other than waveform.com. Of course, there's speedtest.net. Really, you can check your ping on speedtest.net? Yep, it's right there. You can watch it go up or down while you're running a speed test on speedtest.net. I'm not gonna show that here. You guys are familiar with speedtest.net. Run a test, look at the ping. If it's not stable, saying around this 15 to milliseconds and it goes up to like 100 when you're downloading, well, then you have some buffer bloat. The very last thing I will mention is ping plotter. Ping plotter is, you know, a little more complicated as you have to download it to your computer and set it up. But that is probably the best way to see if you have buffer bloat on your connection, because then you can start off a whole bunch of streams, you know, set up Netflix, run a whole bunch of YouTubes and really get into the real nitty gritty and not rely on online tests. You're relying on those base tests. One last thing to mention here. Of course, there is the connection benchmark built within Duma OS. It's pretty accurate, but I always, again, add these other tests in. I will link them all below for you. Again, trying to achieve a plus five or below. Plus zero is about as good as you can get. It's perfect. All right, so come back to congestion control, knowing what we're looking for. Next thing we need to do is we need to choose always. This turns congestion control on, period. Doesn't do anything with this, this wheel down here. Doesn't do anything with the stuff below that. It's just congestion control. Now we're gonna keep running those tests until we have that plus five or lower. And then that's gonna be our upload and download speed from there on out. 
when we're gaming. Games don't take a lot, so this is one of those balancing acts. Every household is going to have a little bit different of a setup. There's nobody out there who can say these numbers are your numbers and they're going to work perfectly for you. It's impossible. Sorry. Just one of those things you're going to have to figure out for yourself. And, um, you know, it doesn't take too much. All right. So we figured out what works for us and what gets us that plus zero or plus five or better. And now what we want to do, depending on how much we've actually capped our bandwidth, we may want to choose always, which just make sure that buffer bloat problem is gone, no matter what we're doing or auto enable, which will automatically enable the congestion control cap, your, your download and upload cap when you're playing a game. So if you don't have a lot of download and you don't have a lot of upload and you're busy online, you will want to use auto enable. But if you got, you know, I was at 570 and I moved it down to, you know, let's say I moved it down to 513, right? So that's not too big of a hit. I've lost some megabytes there, but I still got 513. That's plenty for my household. And now I've got a plus zero on my buffer bloat. That's, that's good. Cool. Now we don't have to worry about either of those things. Sweet deal. I'll just leave it on. Why not? I, I don't care about that little bit of extra bandwidth. However, if you're having to really get really go in deep, you're adjusting 50%, you're losing like half your connection. Well, then you're going to want that auto enable so that it only enables when you're playing a game. Through my years of experience, it's normally the download side that you're going to have the most buffer bloat on. Upload, very rarely you're going to see buffer bloat. So 99% gets most people away. The download is where you can get, you can drive yourself nuts. Get to a point where you feel comfortable and stop. Now, this quality of service wheel, this is actually gone uh, in the new quality of service system. And that's actually a good thing because this thing confuses people. It confused me for many years. Shouldn't I give gaming or this or that more or less or these or that? Don't. I said it, just don't. Ugh. Look, at the end of the day, you could mess with it, but what will end up happening is you'll come back and you'll start having those games that just don't feel good. And then you'll mess with it again. And then you'll have lag on, you know, Netflix or something. You'll be like, what's going on? And you'll mess with it again. You'll have games that feel good again. And it's, if you leave it alone, you won't have any of those problems. Ah, so we're just going to skip that. It doesn't exist. The very last thing to worry about with this version of quality of service is our traffic prioritization. Now, Duma OS is pretty good. You can just leave the classified games, cloud games and work at home on. If you would like, this is fine. However, it's not what I recommend with this system because deep packet inspection is always changing within Duma OS. It is now recommended to actually choose your favorite game if it's on the games list. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn these things off. Again, you can use them. They will be fine. But if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, this is the better way. Add device. We're going to choose our Xbox Series X. We're going to click next. We're going to choose the thing that we want. Call of Duty. Cool. We're going to click done. This advanced mode thing was a thing that we could mess with and you see it is an option however the latest and greatest when it comes to setting everything up is just to leave it alone so we're going to leave it alone not worry about any of these other settings and boom good we got call of duty we had any other games we want to this list and now when that game comes online it will be prioritized sweet so then we have our congestion control taking care of buffer bloat we have our traffic prioritization prioritizing our favorite game all right let's have a real quick look at duma os web which is for your phone and tablets your main dashboard shows you your congestion control settings you can go to ping optimizer and optimize there you can turn on or off your work from home traffic and then on or off prioritization for your gaming of course we want gaming prioritization on Make sure that one's on. 
And then right below that, it says, when you're playing an online game, check back here to quickly see your ping, go to the geo filter to see more. Um, this is really cool. Right here on the main dashboard, you have your phone out, it'll say, hey, I'm playing on a server that's in Los Angeles and the ping is 32 milliseconds. And you can see that right here on your phone, on your tablet, on the main dashboard. And if the server is you know, high ping or it's having problems, you can also see the graph and see spikes and stuff. It's all right here, super neat. Of course, you have all your other stuff, your geo filter, your ping heat map, network priority, network monitor, device manager, ad blocker, ping test, and speed test. Those have been separated from your overall congestion control, congestion benchmark test. So it's separated here when it comes to your web version. So when you go back to the dashboard version, that's why you will see uh, you know, just a speed test or just a ping test. So yeah, all the stuff is right here. Anything else that's missing, you go back to the main dashboard for that is everything when it comes to the current settings with Duma OS. That's all of it. Woo! What a big one. Now, last but not least, we got the bonus, which is Smart QoS, the new QoS system coming to Duma OS in the near future. It really changes the game. Let's take a look. All right, we'll take a quick look at Smart QoS, the new quality of service system coming to Duma OS routers. Now, I did ask if this system is coming to the XR routers, and at the time, they said yes. There are plans to bring this to the XR routers. Who knows if that'll actually come true? As we all know, the XR routers have taken a long time to get any love, but they are getting it, just taking forever. So hopefully, this system does end up on the XR routers because it is so much nicer than the old Duma OS quality of service system. Now, this is early beta. All of this is subject to change. I don't think it's gonna change much. I've been having a great experience with it from people in the beta forums. Most people are happy. Some have run into a few issues. It is beta, so that's happened. But um, overall, the gaming experience has been really smooth for me and others who have been beta testing it. So I just wanted to show this off. First off, you can see it's a lot cleaner looking. This is on the web version. Currently, there's no way to access the de desktop version of quality of service. Um, from what I understand, they're planning to bring that back and maybe even integrate the old quality of service and this quality of service and allow you to switch back and forth. Just use this one when it comes out. All right, so first thing, speeds. Upper right-hand corner here, speed tests actually work 98% of the time instead of not working 98% of the time you can see my results here are way more stable and uh, Correct, which is nice But if for some reason you run a speed test and once this is out and oh, no, it's not working You can come over here and still adjust your speeds um, Next thing is that quality of service wheel and all that other stuff. You can see it's gone. That is gone We don't have to worry about it, but you can see up in the top here. We have ping ping is your congestion control slider do not pay attention to my current slider settings. Uh, there's a lot of talk in the beta forum right now that you don't even need congestion control with the way this smart QoS works. Don't worry about it. Even if you do a buffer bloat test and you have some buffer bloat, it's not a big deal. Now, I have played with congestion control at 100, 100, 100% on both. I've done Netflix streams, Hulu's, all those kind of things, played other games on other consoles, all that kind of stuff, and it does work. Now I'm in the middle of testing some other stuff. So again, just kind of ignore this. But when this stuff comes out, we may not have to worry about congestion control at all, which is really nice. All right, now you can see we've got activities and devices. You can see I've got gaming and some games here. The biggest difference with this system is you just put what you want where you want it. How simple is this? We come over here, we click add, and if we've got groups, devices, work from home, media, gaming, all of our stuff we're kind of used to seeing. Now, if we want to add a whole category, we come over here to groups and we say, we want to add gaming. And then we come over here to devices and we say, you know, I got an Xbox, I want my Xbox. And if you're on PC and that you get played games there online, put your PC there, all right? You can 
add any device you now want to have prioritized as well. So you're not only prioritizing the game, but you're also prioritizing devices. We're gonna get into all of this when it's officially released, but this is cool stuff. All right, so now you can just come in here, you prioritize the stuff you want, and then you come back and you're like, well, I've prioritized my gaming, but then you see, hey, I've got like games underneath this. Currently, it is recommended to actually prioritize your gaming as a whole category, your device, which is my Xbox, and then come underneath and click add again, go over to your individual gaming groups and click on each one of these games you wanna add. Now, one of the things that has been taken away from this system is games console. For anybody familiar with Duma OS, you're familiar with games console. The way this new system works, now it could change by the time it's released, but the way this new system works is you just look for the game. But wait a second, oh man, my game, my favorite game, the thing I play all the time isn't there. Well, NetDuma has a way where you can actually help them get those games and services added to this new smart quality of service system. And people have been just fantastic in the community at getting things added. I didn't actually have a way to have Killer Instinct added. It wasn't on their list. I said, hey community, can you help me out, please? I'd love to see Killer Instinct being prioritized properly. I play it all the time. It's like my favorite game. And I play, you know, that Call of Duty and you know, other stuff, but a lot of Killer Instinct. I'm just, I'm in love with it. And the community came through within like 24 hours and within like 72 hours, it was added to the smart quality of service system. So this new system is fantastic. Now I will save the other stuff, the priority boost, the little star thing you see up in the corner, the live data. I will save all of that for a future video. When this is officially released, we're gonna go through everything, how to set it up, all of that stuff. But this is just a quick look. I'm in love with this system and uh, I can't wait till you guys get your hands on it. All right, everybody, this was a long one. Just wanted to go through everything there is to know about Duma OS currently at the, well, getting toward the end of 2023 here. So who knows what 2024 has to offer? Fingers crossed, a lot of new cool stuff. I'm hearing they're doing some geo filter work and some other things. So pretty interested in all that. We'll keep up to date on all that. And uh, until the next time, take it easy.